Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Brother Nathaniel, and to my right... Y'all, what's up? And today's topic is Jews and Gentiles. It's a very controversial subject. Many of you write us letters. Many of you have many questions about the Jews and the Gentiles. But before we get to the topic, let's open up, as we always do, with John chapter 8, verse 32. This is the book of St. John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, black woman, Latin man, and Latin woman, you are the Israelites according to the Holy Bible, okay? We must return as the Israelites, keep the commandments of the Most High, and truly be set free. Free in our minds, our spirits, and our bodies being returned to our homeland of New Jerusalem. All right? So, Jews and Gentiles, let's get to that real quick. We're going to open up with uh, the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Let's get to the word Gentile. Gentiles. Usually, it means a non-Israelite people. Now, what's the key word we want to focus on? Usually. Why does the scholar, why did the Zondervan say usually? Because sometimes Gentiles can be referring to Israelites. And that's what we're going to show you in today's lesson. Read that again. Gentiles. Usually, it means a non-Israelite people. Now, let's open up, though. Let's, get the, let's go to Proverbs 4 and 7. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Right. Meaning, wisdom is the principal thing. With all thy getting, get understanding. Because you, many of you read the Bible, but one thing you're lacking is the understanding of what the scriptures is really talking about. You can, you can quote, you know what this scripture is, that scripture is, you know this person and that person, but you lack the understanding. But how do you get the understanding? Go to Psalms 111 and verse 10, please. <clears throat> Psalms 111 and verse 10 teaches us as a people how to gain the understanding of the Holy Bible. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Operative word, do. Do what? Do his commandments. That's how you gain the understanding of the Holy Bible. All right, from there, let's go to the beginning of Genesis. Let's see when the word Gentile is first used in the Holy Bible. Genesis 10, verse 5. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided. Jump up above it, about when it says Japheth. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were the sons born, were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Maida and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tyrus and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Riphath and Togomah, the sons of Javan, El Elisha and Tarshish and Kittim and Dodadim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. So now you got some Israelite camps that say, see, the old, they use that to say the only Gentiles, which means what? Usually a non-Israelite people. They say the only Gentiles is the seed of Japheth. Is that right or wrong? According to the Holy Bible. Okay, let's go to the Apocrypha. First Ezra chapter 8. The nation of Israel, the princess, the priests and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land, nor the pollutions of the Gentiles. Nor the pollutions of the Gentiles, go ahead. To wit, of the Canaanites. The Canaanites are Gentiles. Hittites. The Hittites are Gentiles. The Pharisites. The Pharisites are Gentiles. Jebusites. The Jebusites are Gentiles. And the Moabites. And the Moabites are Gentiles. Egyptians, Egyptians are Gentiles, and Edomites, and Edomites are Gentiles. Read the whole verse again in its entirety. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests, and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land, the strange people of the land, nor the pollutions of the Gentiles, meaning their wicked philosophies and doctrines, to wit of the Canaanites, 
the Hittites, Pharisites, Jebusites, and the Moabites, Egyptians, and Edomites. So there the prophet Ezra explains and breaks down for you the Gentiles, okay? Named all those nations. So you Israelites that teach that the only Gentiles are Japheth's seed, you don't know the Bible. Okay, from there. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 46. I'm going to show you some more. The word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah, the prophet, against the Gentiles, against Egypt, against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates, in, in Carchemish, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, smote in the fourth year of Jehoiakim. So now when we read Jeremiah 46 verse 1, it tells you the word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah, which he spoke against the Gentiles. Then he begins and names Egypt, then he follows by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar. And when you read the next chapter, get the next chapter real quick. 47 to 1. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Philistines. Now he mentions the Philistines. Now when you keep going on, he names a lot of different nations as what? Gentiles. So once again, you can let that go. Once again, any Israelite that says the only Gentiles are the sons of Japheth does not know the Bible, leave them if they can't repent of that doctrine. Okay, from there, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Okay, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Okay, and we want verse 15. Now I'm going to show you why Zondervan scholars said that when you read about Gentiles, it usually usually means a non-Israelite people. I'm going to show you why it says usually. It says usually because sometimes the term Gentiles is put upon Israelites. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, was that it? Yeah. Jump down to verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Were our sons and our daughters given to another people? Yes. When it says given to another people means another race of people. So our sons and our daughters was given to another race of people. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Our eyes looked and failed with longing for them, meaning we cried when our sons and daughters was taken from us, okay, in the 1600s, when it was taken from us and brought down to Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Puerto Rico, Mexico, okay, all these different lands, go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Meaning what? We, ha we did not have the economic might to get our children back? nor the military might to get our sons and our daughters back. Now watch this, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. What does it mean we would become a proverb and a byword? It means our nationalities would be changed. We would no longer be known as the Israelites, no longer be known as Judah, or Benjamin, or Levi, or Ephraim, or Manasseh, or Gad, or Reuben, or Issachar, or Naphtali, okay? Those names would be erased from us, and they would change our names. So what does that prove that what, what would happen? We were given what? New nationalities, given Gentile nationalities. Understand what I'm saying here. We would, our nationality was changed, that's what the Most High is letting us know. We would become up an astonishment, a proverb and a byword, meaning our nationalities would be changed. I'm going to show you that right now. From there, go to 1 Maccabees. I'm going to show you when that started, okay? When in history did that start? Did it start in the uh, 1600s or the 1400s under Columbus? No, it didn't start there. But it started under the Greek Empire. I'm going to show you that history from the time of the Greeks. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So who's King Antiochus? He came out of the Seleucus dynasty, okay? A Greek, a so-called white man, under Alexander the Greek. This was their beginning. Go ahead. And every and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. 
Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. So you have many Israelites that consented to that religion, that they would join the Greeks. Go ahead. And sacrifice unto idols. Come on. And profane the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. That we should follow the strange laws of the land. We're just reading down to verse 48. Go ahead. And forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days. So that, and festival days. This is what the Greek Empire did. They wanted us to forget the laws of the Most High and do what the Greeks did. Read on. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols, and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised. And notice this part. What verse is that? 48. We're in verse 48. Another law that the Greeks put on us is that we should leave our sons uncircumcised. Read that part again. That they should leave, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised. Go ahead. And make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Now watch this. Hold that. Go to Ephesians. Hold your finger right there. We're coming right back there. Why is that history that the Greek Empire wanted us to forget the laws of the Most High and not circumcise our sons? Why is that important? Because when you get to the New Testament, a lot of you go to Ephesians 2.11 and are confused about what is Paul saying. Ephesians 2.11. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. Stop right there. Read that again. Wherefore, wherefore remember that ye being in time past. Being in time past what? Gentiles. The Israelites were called Gentiles. In the flesh. Meaning what? They were not physically circumcised in their flesh, in their penis. Go ahead. Who are called uncircumcision. We were called, many Israelites were called uncircumcision. Uncircumcised or circumcision? Uncircumcision. Uncircumcision. Why? What is that history? First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41 down to 48. Go ahead. Called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. Because you had a sect of Israelites that continued circumcising. Was that it? No. In the flesh made by hands. Right. Now go back to First Maccabees. Read verse 48 again. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Go down to 50. Read down. To the end, they might forget the law. What was the purpose of us not keeping the laws of the Most High? That we would forget the laws. Why what, was it important that we not circumcise our sons? To the end, that we might forget the law. What was the purpose of sacrificing swine's flesh to the end that we might forget God's laws? Go ahead. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. Mm. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. You see that? What the law of the Greeks was? Whoever would not obey the king's law of not keeping the most highest laws would be put to death. Whoever went around keeping the Most High's laws, the Greeks killed them. That's the war that the Maccabees went through. This is the mediation between the Old Testament and the book of Matthew, okay, the New Testament. A lot of you don't know this history, okay, so you're confused. Now, from there, 2 Maccabees, we went chapter 6. We're going to read verse 6 through 9. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath. See that? Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath. Why? This is still a continuation of what Antiochus did. Go ahead. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. What? Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. It was a law that you could not say you were a Jew. You were an Israelite. There was a law the Greeks established. That's why back in Deuteronomy 28 verse 37. Let's go right back there in case you forgot the thought. Deuteronomy 28 verse 37. This was a curse that would come upon the Israelites. That their nationalities would be changed. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, 
whither the Lord shall lead thee. Meaning our nationalities would be changed. We would be called by new names. Let's go back to 2 Maccabees. What verse were you at? It's in verse 6. Read it again. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So there was a law that you could not say you were a Jew of the kingdom of Judah. There was a law that said you could not call yourself an Israelite. Reading down to 9. And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, Bacchus, that's that feast of called Bacchanal today, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy mm -hmm. against the Jews. Ptolemy was another Edomite Greek king. Go ahead. That they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. Read that part again. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Do you see that? Whichever Israelite would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Read that part again so you understand the history. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Do you hear the history here? Number one, there was a law the Greeks made. You cannot call yourself a Jew. You cannot call yourself an Israelite. You had to conform yourselves to the manners of the Gentiles. So what did they have to become? Gentiles, they had to become Greeks. This was the war in the book of Maccabees when they fought against the Greeks about that. From there, let's go to the book of John in the New Testament. St. John chapter 7. And we want verse 35. I'm going to show you more of the history. I'm closing up the gap for you so you can understand the history behind the scenes. John chapter 7 and verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Now remember, this is the, under the Roman Empire now. Greeks, the Rome has already absorbed the Greek Empire. That's why by this time it's called the Greco-Roman Empire. Read it again, verse 35. Then said, then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? That we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed? Will he go unto the dispersed? The word dispersed means scattered. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Who were the dispersed? Let's find that out first. Who were the dispersed? Go to Deuteronomy 28, 64. The word dispersed means scattered. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, 64, this goes back. Notice how I keep taking you back to Deuteronomy 28, because Deuteronomy 28 is a pivotal chapter for you blacks and Latinos to realize you are the Israelites. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So the prophecy that Moses gave us is that the Israelites would be scattered amongst the nations and we would serve other gods, okay? When we scattered in slavery times, we really scattered today. Now, go back to, uh, go to James 1 and 1. James 1 verse 1 to show you that. So Deuteronomy, Moses said we would be scattered from one nation to another. Okay, the word scattered, as I said earlier, is another word for dispersed that's written in John 7. Now James 1 and 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Why were they scattered? Because the prophecy of Deuteronomy 28, verse 64, God told Moses to tell us. That if we broke the commandments, we'll, we would be scattered amongst the nations. Now, let's go back to John 7, verse 35 again. Let everything else go. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall, shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed? Will he go unto the dispersed, unto the scattered? Among the Gentiles? The scattered Israelites were among the Gentiles, and what did they call them? And teach the Gentiles. You see here what they're calling the dispersed Israelites? Gentiles. Read it again. Then said the Jews among themselves, 
Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed? The dispersed Israelites? Among the Gentiles? Or among the Gentiles? And teach the Gentiles? And teach the Gentiles? So what were they calling the dispersed Israelites? Gentiles. 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 From there, let's go to Matthew 28, verse 19. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Matthew 28, verse 19. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Mm -hmm. This is where you fall off the horse right here. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So you see that? Go ye and teach all nations. So now right there you are. See that? Oh, no, 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 no. Remember the term Gentile meant what? It usually means a non-Israelite people. Usually, but not all the time. So what did Christ mean by go ye into all nations? Hold that. You already forgot the thought I know. Deuteronomy 4 verse 27. I'm going to find you the proper precepts to help you in your understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 27. It's the same thing that Deuteronomy 28 64 said, but Deuteronomy 4 verse 27 uses another key word there. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Wait, wait, wait. Read that again. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. So the Israelites were scattered amongst the nations. Was that it? And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So now, the Israelites were scattered amongst the nations. Go back to Matthew 28 now. Shall lead you. I'm sorry. What was it? What you Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now why did it say go ye therefore and teach all nations? Now you understand. Because the Israelites, which became known as Gentiles, were scattered amongst the nations. Now watch this. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 and verse 22. I'm going to show you about the history, about the prophecy regarding the history of Israel. Those of you who've seen the, the lesson on the two kingdoms, you know the Israelites were divided, okay? The kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel, okay? Ezekiel 37 and verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountain of Israel. So the prophecy is that the Lord would make us one nation again. So what happened that he got to make us one nation? I thought we're already one nation. No, we're not one nation now. Read on. And one king shall be king to them all. That's Christ. Come on. And they shall, and they shall be no more two nations. They shall no more be two nations. The Israelites were split into two nations. You had the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. We were split into two nations. Go ahead. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore Keyword, at all. Keyword, divided. We were divided into two nations, two kingdoms. Now watch this. Now, let's deal with the kingdom of Judah first. Now, we, let's go from there. Go to Acts chapter 2. Where was the kingdom of Judah which was divided from the kingdom of Israel, were they scattered amongst the Gentiles? Let's deal with them first. I'm going to show you the history on that. My question again, was the kingdom of Judah, known as Jews, were they scattered amongst the nations? Acts 2 and verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So the word Jew is short for Judah. Read it again. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. Now this was on a feast of Pentecost. Go ahead. Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. How were these Jews out of every nation under heaven? They were scattered in captivity. Okay, understand that. From the Babylonian captivity to the Persian and Mede captivity to the Greek captivity. They were scattered amongst all nations. That's what it said. Okay, from there. Let's go to Acts 11 verse 19. I'm dealing with the kingdom of Judah just for this moment. The Jews that were scattered. Go ahead. So Acts 2, find it. Acts 2 already said that the Jews were devout men out of every nation under heaven. They came from Arabia, Egypt, uh, Pamphylia. They came from everywhere. Now Acts 11 verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. So during this time up until Acts 11, the only ones being, that the gospel was being preached to were the Jews. 
the gospel was not being preached to the kingdom of Israel, meaning what? The northern kingdom. It was only being preached to the southern kingdom of Israel, which were known as Jews. The kingdom of Judah, which included Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Understand that. Read that part again. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. So the gospel was only preached unto the Jews only up by this time in that, here in Acts 11. Now watch this. Go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. So you might be asking, well, wait a minute. Didn't Philip preach to the Ethiopian eunuch? Oh, now we're going to get some understanding there. We just read in Acts 11, the gospel was only being preached to none but the Jews only. So what's going on here in Acts 8? Acts 8, verse 27 to 35. And he arose and went, and behold, a man, an Ethiopian. An Ethiopian. An eunuch of, a, of great authority under Kandasi, queen of the Ethiopians, mm. who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to worship and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Why was this Ethiopian coming to Jerusalem to worship? Huh? Why? There was a law written. Hold that. Hold your finger right there. Go to Deuteronomy 16, 16. Let's read it quick because I don't want to get off the point. I just want to show them filling the gap, the law. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Why was this Ethiopian going to Jerusalem to worship? Deuteronomy 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God yeah. in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles you hear those three holidays so it said all which are males Israelite males had to go up to Jerusalem that's the place that the Lord chose now let's go back to Acts and he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia and eunuch of great authority under Kadasi, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So why was that Ethiopian coming to Jerusalem to worship? Because there was a law for the Israelites. All that were males had to come up to worship. All that were Israelite males had to go to Jerusalem to worship. All that were Israelite males. So this Ethiopian, okay, what was he? Was he of the kingdom of Judah? or the kingdom of Israel. Remember in Acts 11, we just read, the gospel was only being preached to none but the Jews only, the kingdom of Judah only. Read on. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah, Isa Isaiah, which is the Isaiah, prophet, the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. So now the spirit of the Lord said to Philip, go near and join yourself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? So it's good that this eunuch, this Ethiopian, which was of the kingdom of Judah, he was a eunuch in the Ethiopian empire, he understood that he could not gain the understanding except some man should guide him. A man that has the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon him. All I went down is to 35. And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which, which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speak of the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? So he said in Isaiah, who is Isaiah talking about, of himself or some other guy? Go ahead. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So Peter, I mean Philip, was teaching him 
about Christ being prophesied in Isaiah. Okay? So this Ethiopian eunuch, he had the scriptures. He was reading the Spirit said, go join yourself to him. Why? Because Acts 11 verse 19 says, the gospel was only being preached to none but Jew the Jews only. Understand that. So what was this Ethiopian? Of the kingdom of Judah, a Jew. So from there, let's go to Isaiah 11 and 11. Isaiah 11 verse 11. Let's get some more about the scattering of Israel, especially the kingdom of Judah. That's what I'm concentrating on for just for a moment. Isaiah 11 verse 11 and 12. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. The second coming, go ahead. To recover the remnant of his people. The remnant of his people, go ahead. Which shall be left from Assyria. Which shall be left from where? From Assyria. Go ahead. And from Egypt. Go ahead. And from Patros. Mm -hmm. And from Cush. And from Cush. Cush was what? That was one of Noah's uh, grand. That was Noah's grandson. Cush became the father of what? The Ethiopians. So who was the Ethiopian eunuch? He was one of the remnants that had been left there. Okay. Read it again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Patros and from Cush Go ahead. and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Mm. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. The ensign for the nations, which is the Bible, the truth that they're the Israelites. Go ahead. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Come on. And gather together the dispersed of Judah. Showing you that the two kingdoms themselves were scattered. Okay. Not only were they split. That's why it separated them two. But they both were scattered abroad. Go ahead. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So who was that Ethiopian eunuch? One of the dispersed from Cush. Ethiopia. From there, let's go now. Let's deal with the kingdom of Israel. Let's go to Matthew 4. Matthew chapter 4. Okay. So now we've read on previous uh, lessons about the kingdom of Israel. They took a council and they came on this side of the world. But did all of them leave? No, all of them didn't leave. A large remnant of them left. But many of them remained behind on the eastern side of the world. Matthew 4. We went verse 14 to 16. Okay. Matthew 4, verse 14 to 16. Right. Uh, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Nathalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Now read it again. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulon. The land of Zebulon. Go ahead. And the land of Naphtalium. The land of Naphtali. That's the tribe of Naphtali. Go ahead. By the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Where was Galilee located? Why is it saying Galilee of the Gentiles? Hold that. Give me Joshua 21. Hold your finger right there. Joshua 21, verse 32. Let's read about Galilee real quick. Joshua 21 and verse 32. Verse 32. Yeah. And out of the tribe of Nathali, Kadesh in Galilee, with her suburbs. You see that? Read it again. Out of the tribe of Nathali. Out of the tribe of Nathali. Kadesh in Galilee. Kadesh in Galilee. So now when we go back to Matthew, let's go back there again. This is what you need to understand. What were they calling Zebulun and Nathali? Read it again. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulon and the land of Nathalium, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Galilee of the Gentiles. So what were they calling them? Those that le were left behind. Gentiles. 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 From there, Acts 13. Acts chapter 13. We want verse 45 and 46. Okay. We're showing you some more about this controversy of the Jews and Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? That's being spoken of in the New Testament. Okay? Acts 13, verse 45 and 46. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, 
contradicting and blaspheming. So the Jews was contradicting everything. The kingdom of Judah was going against the uh, understanding that Paul brought out about Christ. Now it wasn't all the kingdom of Judah. It was what? These certain scribes and Pharisees. Go ahead. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said. Listen good to this part. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Now I want to pause right there. It was necessary that the word of God should what? Should first. Should first. Have been spoken to you. Spoken to you. You who? You Jews. You kingdom of Judah. Read that part again. It was necessary. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing that ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So Paul said to the Jews, he said it was necessary that the word of God should first be spoken to you. But since you find yourselves unworthy, lo, of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Let's read the prophecy. Go to Zechariah. Chapter 12 and verse 7. Let's, why does it say it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you Jews, you of the kingdom of Judah? What's the prophecy? Zechariah 12 and verse 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Uh oh, read it again. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's why Paul said it was necessary. That the word of God should first be preached unto you, be spoken to you. Go back again. Zechariah 12. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So that, why did it have to go to Judah first? So that the glory of the other inhabitants of Jerusalem, meaning the other Israelites, the other 11 tribes, the other kingdom, would not magnify themselves against Judah. You understand that? That's why it was necessary that the word of God should first be preached to the Jews. Okay? So from there, let's go to, you got something? No, no, no. no. Let's read it again then. In Acts. Acts 13 verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So according to Zechariah 12 and 7, why was it necessary that the gospel was preached to the Jews because the prophecy said he would raise the tents, he would save the tents of Judah first. That was the prophecy. Why? So that the other inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Who were the other inhabitants of Jerusalem? What are they being called here in Acts chapter 13 verse 46? Lo, we what? Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Gentiles they're being called. Gentiles. Now watch this. First Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2. Watch this. See, this New Testament, it's heavy. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Read it again. Ye know that ye, that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. What's the key word we want out of there? Were. Read it again. Ye know that ye were ye were Go ahead. Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Ye were Gentiles. Ye were Gentiles. Meaning you used to be Gentiles. How could you used to be a Gentile? Remember the history. The Greeks forced the Israelites to give up their laws. Give up their name and become Gentiles, be conformed after the manner of the Gentiles. That's what we read in the book of the Maccabees, okay? That's why Paul says, you know that you were Gentiles. You used to be, okay? How is that possible? Because they are Israelites who were carried away unto dumb idols. What dumb idols? They were following Greek customs. Why Greek customs? Because in the book of the Maccabees, remember what happened? They forced the Israelites, many of them, to conform after the manner of the Gentiles. Okay. okay. Before you go along with it. Go ahead. 
Ephesians 2 and 11 again. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. That's right, in time past. Why in time past? Because they were following Greek customs. From when? The book of Maccabees explained it to you. But since your, your Protestant Christians removed the book of the Maccabees, you're like, I guess this means everybody. I don't know. It's not everybody. It's talking about the Israelites. From there, let's go to John 4, verse 7 through 12. Okay, John 4. Okay, I'm going to show you something about John 4. Because remember, up until that time, the gospel was only being preached to the kingdom of Judah. But something happened when Christ walked the scene. He went into the land of Samaria. Okay, watch this. Now remember, he had already told him, don't go to the Samaritans in Matthew 10, 5 and 6. But watch here in John 4. He went there. Uh, St. John chapter 4, verse we went 7. 7 through 12. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Come on. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Why didn't the Jews deal with the Samaritans? Because the kingdom was split in two. I'm going to read it again. The kingdom was split in two. Hold that. Go right back to Ezekiel 37 and verse 22. Ezekiel 37. Because maybe you've already forgotten the thought. I hope you at home are taking notes. I hope you have your Bibles and reading along with us. Okay? Take notes. Ezekiel 37 and verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. That's Christ, go ahead. And they shall be no more two nations. They shall no more be two nations. Two nations, go ahead. Neither shall they be divided. Neither shall they be divided, divided, divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Let's go back now to John 4. This goes back to that uh, split. Read that again. Verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. When she said the Jews, what was she talking about? The kingdom of Judah. You of the kingdom of Judah, you guys don't deal with us. Who is Samaria? Hold that. Isaiah 7 verse 9. You might be confused. Who is Samaria? Because you might have the unlearned thought that these are Africans. <laughs> no, it ain't Africans. These are Israelites. And I'm going to prove it as we read down. Isaiah 7 and verse 9. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. The head of Ephraim is what? The head of Ephraim is Samaria. Read it again. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. Go back to John 4. And verse 9 again. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Ephraim, go ahead. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. You of the northern, southern kingdom, kingdom, you don't deal with us. There's a split in the kingdom. Remember that? Let's keep reading down. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Christ said, If you had asked me, I would give you living water. For further proof that this is an Israelite woman. Go ahead. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then have thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Art thou greater than our father? Our father Jacob. So what is she? Of the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim. Okay, remember there was a split. And they did not, Judah and Ephraim and them, we didn't deal with each other. Go ahead. Down to 12. This is 12. Oh, that was 12? Then I'm finishing up. Okay. Uh, art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself? And his cattle and his children and his cattle. That's it. Keep reading. I want to, I'm gonna show you something. Jesus answered and said unto her, 
Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. If you drink of the well that Jacob gave you, you shall thirst again. Go ahead. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. If you drink of the water that I shall give the Holy Spirit, the true understanding of the Bible, you shall never thirst. Go ahead. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Come on. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water. So she now wants this water. Go ahead. That I thirst not. Come on. Neither come hither to draw. Watch this. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband mm -hmm. and come hither. Go ahead. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said. Jump to verse 22 where it says, Believe me, you shall neither in this mountain. Okay. What verse is that? 22. Go ahead. Uh, 20, 21. 21. When John 4, verse 21. 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. The hour cometh. When ye shall neither in this When mountain, it says ye, meaning you of the kingdom of Israel, you of the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom, read it again. The hour cometh. When ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem, nor the southern kingdom at Jerusalem, the kingdom of Judah, worship the Father. Why? Why? What did he mean by the hour cometh? When you won't be worshiping in this mountain, you of the northern kingdom, or Judah won't be worshiping at Jerusalem. Why did he say the hour comes when that nobody going to be worshiping? Because 70 AD, the Romans was prophesied to come and destroy both kingdoms, the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. Read the whole verse again. 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. You of the kingdom of Israel, you don't know what you're worshiping. Go ahead. We know what we worship. We Jews, we of the kingdom of Judah know what we worshiping. For salvation is of the Jews. What does that part mean? It means Ephraim and the other tribes must come under Judah. Christ was of the tribe of Judah. All Israel must fall and bow down to Christ of the kingdom of Judah. That's all he's saying. Okay, was that it? Uh... From there, go to Galatians 2 and 11 now. Galatians chapter 2. We're going to read 11 to 16. I'm going to show you some more. Watch this. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 through 16. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the, to the face. So when Peter came to Antioch, Paul withstood Peter to his face. Let's see what Peter did that made Paul have to get in his face. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. Mm -hmm. For behold, that certain came from James, and did eat with the Gentiles. And did eat, certain came from James, and did eat with the Gentiles. Now you know who these Gentiles are, the scattered Israelites of the northern kingdom. Go ahead. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing they fearing them which were of the circumcision. So what did Peter do? When Peter saw the Jews coming, which were of the circumcision, he saw they saw Peter eat with the Gentiles, the other Israelites. Peter separated himself. Read that part again. For before that certain came from James and did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Why did he separate himself and withdrew himself? Remember John 4, what did the Samaritan woman say to Christ? You Jews have no dealings with us. Okay, understand that. That's why that was a custom. The northern kingdom did not deal with the southern kingdom. Judah did not deal with Israel. Okay, uh, you got to know that history. Okay, so that's why when the Jews came, Peter withdrew himself. He separated himself. Read on. Right. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. The Jews. And the other Jews dissembled like him. So like the other him. Jews did the same thing that Peter. They followed Peter's bad example. Go ahead. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. So even Barnabas did the same dumb thing. Now Paul was real mad at Barnabas because Barnabas was with Paul from the beginning. When the Lord called out the uh, Gentiles for people for his name, okay? Which was Israel. Go ahead. 
But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Because Christ came for all 12 tribes. I said unto Peter before them all. If thou being a Jew. If thou being a Jew of the kingdom of Judah. Liveth after the manner of the Gentiles. You living like the Gentile Israelites. Those scattered worshiping idols. And not as do the Jews. And not as do the Jews who got the truth. And the truth in Christ. You ain't living like that. Go ahead. Why compellest thou the Gentiles? Why do you force the other Israelites, those Gentile Israelites, to live as do the Jews? To keep the laws of the Most High. So what was going on here? That's proof, further proof that the laws were being taught. And Paul got on Peter. He said, Peter, why are you separating yourself from your brothers? Because the Jews coming, okay? You got to forget that dumb custom of separation, okay? The prophecy said that we would no longer be two kingdoms. We would no longer be two nations. Peter, you know that. So Paul was getting on him from there. Was that down to 16? No. We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles. Right, because they understood the laws in Christ. Go ahead. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. What did he mean? The law of sacrifice. Okay. You're not justified by that. Go ahead. But by the faith of Jesus Christ. That's what justifies us. That's going to bring all Israel together. The faith in Jesus the Christ. His sacrifice. Not the sacrifice of the lamb or the ox or the goat. That couldn't bring Israel together as one nation. Let's go back to Romans. Let's go to Romans 9 now. Okay. Romans chapter 9 verse 24 to 27. Even us whom he have called. Not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Read it again. Even us, whom he have called, not of the Jews only. Even us he has called, not of Judah only, but also of the Gentiles. So what is Paul saying? That Christ didn't call just Judah. He called us too. He called all the other Israelites too. And he was calling themselves what? Gentiles. Read it again. Even us. Even us. The operative word us. Go ahead. Whom he hath called. Christ called us. Go ahead. Not of the Jews only. Not of Judah only. But also of the Gentiles. But also of the Gentiles. Now you should know who those Gentiles are. Keep reading. As he saith also in O.C. And O. Hosea. Go ahead. I will call them my people which were not my people. I will call them my people which were not my people. What is he quoting? He's quoting Hosea. Let's get that real quick. Okay. Time is running. Time is of an essence. We're going to get to actual quote. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Okay? Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10 and 11. Yet the, children, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. When was it said we are not God's people? Remember from the time of the Greeks. When they were following Greek customs, Greek laws. Read it again. And it shall, yet the number, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Now that prophecy goes all the way up until today. Because we're not called the people of God today. We're not called Judah, Benjamin and Levi. We're called American blacks. We're called West Indian blacks. We're called Haitian blacks. That goes all the way up until today with the northern kingdom of Israel. Where they're not called Ephraim no more. They're called Puerto Ricans. They're not called Dominic, uh, 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 Simeon no more. They're called Dominicans. They're not called Manessa no more. They're called Cubans. So go back to Romans 9. Go ahead. 11 verse. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be okay. gathered together and appoint themselves one head. That's Christ. And they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Back to Romans 9 real quick. Romans 9, what verse you at? 25. Go ahead. As he saith in Hosea, O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which were not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there 
shall they be called the children of the living God. So now, even during the time of Peter and Paul and them, they had to gather those dispersed Israelites that were following Greek customs from the time of the Maccabees that told them a law was set up. You can no longer call yourselves Jews. You got to call yourselves Corinthians. You got to call yourself Thessalonians. You got to call yourself Galatians. That's the history that you're missing in your churches. Okay, call yourself Ephesians. So now, even until today, that history falls in. With that, brothers and sisters, we pray you've enjoyed today's lesson. We can't do this alone, brothers and sisters. We need your help. We need you to send your donations to help keep this truth going. Visit our website at www.israelunite.org. And you can visit us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Nathaniel7. With that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom. Shalom. For a copy of this show and all other shows, please visit our website at originalroyalty.com.